Good morning. How are you guys doing? You guys can go ahead and take your seats. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My name is Ron Jefferson, for those who don't know me, and my worship changed when I sacrificed my ignorance. You see, uh, some of you guys probably remember about a year or so ago, I was actually on these keyboards, and I was playing. Some of you guys remember that? And we got a, a couple years ago, we got a new worship director. Her name was uh, Tina Seymour, I think. And uh, Tina did something really interesting. She actually got to know us. And as she began to know us, she began to realize that some of us had other capabilities, other talents. And I'll be honest, I liked my keyboard. I wanted to stay on that keyboard. I really did. But over a time of Tina getting to know us, she began to say things about me. And she said, you know, he's more than just a keyboardist. And she had master classes. For these, these guys that, that you see singing and, 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 or singing and playing instruments, they, this is not just a Sunday morning thing. This is a lifestyle. And she forced us to have time. And my timer is not running, guys, if you guys want to start it. She, she, she forced us to into information and knowledge concerning praise and worship. And then she called me and she said, okay, I've been here for the first year and I've been teaching all these master classes. Now it's your turn. <laughs> I was like, you mean I actually have to learn about this subject and to share that information with others? But she gave us that opportunity and it forced us to sort of dig in. And so I began to say, God, please help me. Like, I mean, I'm supposed to stand before this team, this magnificent team, and teach them about praise and worship. How can that happen? But God began to deal with my heart, and he led me to a very foundational scripture concerning worship, and I found out it wasn't what I thought it was. Please lean in. Please lean in. So what I want to do, I only have a few minutes, and so I want to take you to a foundational scripture for worship. See, when I studied the word of God, God taught me something. There's this law called the law of first mentions, meaning that if you want to go to have an original understanding of what something means, go to when it's first mentioned in the word of God. So let's see what happens when we see, first see the word worship. Let's see what's going on. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 22. I'm reading from the New King James, verses 1 through 5. And this is about Abraham. And it says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Are you available? Then he said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, means chosen by Jehovah, and offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, not all of the mountains, which I will shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and, and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and, okay, worship, not sing, worship, and we will come back to you. So, so, here, so here it is, point number one. The sincerest form of worship is when we sacrifice finite resources to an infinite or infinite God. There has to be a separation of something that comes from us of something that goes to him. That, in essence, is worship, okay? Now, I want to tell you what worship is not, because a lot of times we get confused with this. Worship is not praise. Praise is not worship. The purpose of praise is attraction. The purpose of worship is exchange. There is no exchange if there's first no attraction. So you need praise, but you also need to understand what worship is. So let's talk about some forms of praise because I don't want you to get confused. Y'all, you guys remember that song, Shabbat, Hallelujah, Barak, praise? Okay, so let's talk about what, what some of those words actually mean. So Tehillah means what these guys do. We give our song. It means to sing. I'm not going to sing, but it means to sing. Okay? Uh, Zamar means we give our music. That's what the guys in the back do. They're musicians. They are Zamarist. Yada, I like this word. So Yada is actually a hyphenate word. Yad means an open hand. Ab means Jehovah. So Yad, an open hand to Jehovah. Shabbat means we give our voice. Halal, which is a word for hallelujah, means we give our dignity, which means I need some space. You may not want to look this way because I might embarrass you by what I'm about to do. That's halal. Okay? And Barak means kneeling, we give our hearts. Okay, so, so, so listen. Uh, this, is, this is my third point. I want to break this down. Worship is the place where the gift and the giver become one and full surrender to Jehovah. So here's what Abraham had to make a choice between. He had to see the gift that God had given him, 
and he had to see the God that had given him the gift. The gift and the God that had given him the gift. So he had a choice to make. Will the gift that God gave me be my God or will the God who gave me this gift? The proof, the proof is the willing exchange that Abraham was, ma- was willing to make from a place of obedience. Okay, so, so, so watch this. I know a lot of you think, well, I can worship God. I don't have to give him anything. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so, so let's, let's define the word worship biblically. It comes from the root word shaka, and it means to prostrate. Okay, I, I like this. Here we go. It means prostrate. Do you guys know what prostrate means? It means to lie down. So, so watch this. Let's pretend like this for a minute is the altar because that's where you give your gift at, right? So if I give a gift called a sacrifice, I lay it down on the altar. Now no, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Um, I can be that gift that I lay down. And so right now, I know this is not on the ground, but I'm prostrate. So when I give a gift, it's called sacrifice. But when I am the gift, it's called obedience. Okay? So, so, so watch this. Let, let's learn from King Saul for just a minute. King Saul was not willing to obey. Right? And from that, we got the phrase, obedience is better than. But in obedience, there is sacrifice. See, see, here's the thing. When I'm willing to obey God, let's just open this up. I sacrifice my opinions. Is that okay? Um, I sacrifice my career at times. Is that all right? And sometimes I have to obey him concerning my children. Okay? And, uh, and sometimes I have to obey him concerning my preferences. Oh, goodness. And sometimes, listen, whew, this is a big one. My marriage. What did God say? What did God say? And listen, I also give God my finite resources. Okay? And, and lastly, I give God my life. Okay? So everyone says that, um, you know, my lifestyle is worship. Do you obey? Is it? The areas that you submit to God is the areas that you're willing to worship him. Okay. So, so, so if, I, if I can just summarize this. Um, Worship is this place of full surrender. And you can't tell by who's singing or who's playing who's a real worshiper. Because the worship doesn't actually start to the musicians and the singer stops singing. And they say, and then it's time to give tithes and offerings. Those who stand still aren't worshipers. Those who are willing to separate from these finite resources and exchange them with heaven, those are the real worshipers. That's what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. Thank you. Thank you. One of these things is not like the other. Hello. I'm Denise, and I'm representing the seniors of the house. (laughs) I think I'm old enough to be all of their parents. (laughs) And um, my worship changed when I took my eyes off myself. Just like I looked at all these young people when Pastor Josh invited us to speak And I thought, what, you know, what's the old lady doing up here? But when I take my eyes off myself and see what the Lord is pulling me, showing me, pushing me, holding me to do. And that's when my worship changed. My story isn't one I'm real proud of, but I noticed this this year. And that was a resistance to change as we were heading towards transition, and especially in the area of praise and worship. I'd come in, and all of a sudden, the ecclesia was down, and we had a screen, and pictures, and dripping things, and bubbling things, and all of these lights all over, and the sound is going way higher, and then our, you know, all of our folks up here 
all of the people that are bringing praise and worship, they're changing and, and you know, I'm seeing different, different people. And so I, 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 I think, I like, I feel. And as that realization of my heels being dug in came to my head, I saw that especially through consecration, my posture was not correct. My posture was out of alignment for the body. And this is, this, this body of Ambassadors Worship Center, this is my home. This is my house. I've been here since 1996. I've been here a long time. This is my home. And so, the Lord directed me, led me, like, like Ron said. I almost said Pastor Ron. Woo. Let that marinate. Okay. Um, led me back to a scripture that's been in my life since I was in ninth grade. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10 in the Amplified for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ, not drawing Christ to you, drawing you to Christ, that you've been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. This salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us. And as, as I started to meditate on this, this showed me three things that, that I needed to do. And the first was stop. Stop thinking any of this is about me. It is not about me. None of it. You know, um, in all of this, as the Lord was leading me back, of course, because he sets the table, he brings everything to the table, and what he did this last session of net group was he prepared in Sister Yvonne and Sister Tina, he prepared a net group around the book, The Purpose and Power of Praise and Worship. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This led me to a place that I really, in all of these years, did not, I didn't know a lot of this. I hadn't really meditated on a lot of this. And Dr. Monroe says, praise comes from our relationship with God. To avoid this outward expression is to disobey God. It requires our effort. We must choose. We must choose. Are we going to praise or aren't we? Forget the lights, forget the sound, forget the song, forget which is, are your favorites, forget all of that. Are, are you going to choose, Denise, to come in here and praise? Are you going to choose to worship? Number two, look. I had to reflect on God's sovereignty. He is Yahweh. He is all of it righteousness, eternal, holy, eternal purpose. I, I had to reflect. I had to open my eyes to who he is again, his divine purpose. When we praise God, Dr. Monroe says, we don't have to look for him because he comes to us. And when I'm looking, so many times I take my reflection back 20, 30 years. I mean, he's carried me through some stuff. I mean, my senior citizens can tell, I know, we've got stories and then stories and then more stories. He's carried me through. But you know what? He's carried me through stuff this morning. If I open my eyes, it's all here. Last, I have to listen. Isaiah 
55, verse, the beginning of verse 3 says, Incline your ear, submit and consent to the divine will, and come to me. Hear, and your soul will revive. He promises he is here. He, and, and what he does through praise and worship for the universe, that happens right here. That happens right here. That happens right here. It's not always for me. We've got people in this world that need our praise and worship. And this is a work in progress for me, but I would encourage you to lean in. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Christina Kirkman, and I've been going to AWC for 22 years now and serving in the children's department for 15 years. And my worship changed when I sacrificed my comfort zone. So all that I've ever wanted was to be a part of a happy, healthy family. And God honored that desire and gave me two happy, healthy families. And the first is uh, married to Matt Kirkman. We have Olive, Levi, and Evelyn. And, <laughs> and then included in that is our biological families, my family, his family. We have an amazing family. But God gave us a double portion, and this AWC is our second family. And the, I'm not just using those words. Some people say we're a church and we're a family, but we're, we're really a family. I'm, I'm not looking for an entourage, so... When I'm looking for people to spend time with, they don't have to be my age. They don't have to have the same life experiences as me. Miss Denise, have you been to our house for supper? Yeah, Kevin and Denise have come over, and then Kevin gave the kids a ride in his convertible afterwards. And they still talk about that old convertible. It was a real memory for them. Ron, we have to set a date on the calendar. This is a plug for net groups. We'd, we've recently met the Jeffersons in net groups, and so we're going to get together. Kylan, have you been to our house for supper? With your, your wife and kids? Yep. And when Olive made the biscuits, she made us um, dessert, strawberry shortcake. And when she put two cups of sugar instead of two tablespoons of sugar in the biscuits, we had sugar cookies with strawberries. And we all ate them. That's family. We all ate them anyway. <laughs> Tina, have you been to our house for supper with your whole, whole family? <laughs> sisters and husbands and kids, everybody. And we fed you supper, but we also, when you come, we treat you like family. We make you play games. You have to sit down and play word games. And then, then I get my little box and I open it up that has questions. Questions about how you grew up, what you're afraid of, where you want to go in life. Do you believe in aliens? All, ki all kinds of things. <laughs> but we talk, we talk about all of it. So I just want to talk to everybody here today like family. And I want to share with you, I want to share with you how God changed my worship when I sacrificed my comfort zone. So Romans 11:36 says that for from him all things originate, and through him all things live and exist, and to him are all things directed. To him be glory and honor forever. Amen. So that, that scripture uh, reminds me of the song, I Surrender All. Yeah. And one of the verses says, um, All to Jesus I surrender, now I feel the sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full surrender. Glory, glory to his name. So last week, Pastor Josh talked about how Jesus is the altar, and we are the sacrifice. And God wants to set us on fire. So in the scripture, and in that song, and um, in life, how does, how does being torched bring you joy? So the, this, is, this is what I've been through. This is what I've experienced. So number one, I had to surrender all my time. I had to uh, make myself available to other people the way that God made himself available to me. And the crash course in that is being a parent. Once you are responsible for somebody else's needs 24-7, you're up at 2 in the morning, you're up again at 4 in the morning, you're up at 6 in the morning, 
and you make a decision to just be in that moment and not think about yourself and not be angry, but think about your child and think about what's best for your child. And it doesn't, it doesn't really get any easier. Our kids now are 15, 14, and 10. And so last night, before, before I was going to have to do this this morning, I, I wanted a quiet, peaceful evening. We have supper together. Everybody, you know, does something quiet. I, I know everybody's teeth are brushed. They've taken a bath, and they go to bed by 10. Not what happened at all. Um, one daughter had a slumber party, had a friend spend the night. My son was missing in action half the day over at a neighbor friend's house. Uh, my husband, the doorbell rings while I'm going over my notes at, I don't know, 10 or 10.30, and my brother-in-law comes over to watch boxing. Every, every single one of these things I could be irritated about. It's not my preference. My preference would be to have a quiet, peaceful house, go to bed early, get up and do my thing, because God has asked me to do this thing today. But that doesn't matter. My, my needs don't, be, don't ever come before my family's needs. All of us are important all of the time. And with my family, every single one of those activities last night was an answer to a prayer. Olive was in her room. She's turned her room into a movie theater. But that was a personal prayer. Like God, God provided a job for her at 15. She saved her money. She bought a projector. So she's got her own prayer life and her own faith life. Levi was with a friend. We moved to a new house in 2020. Our kids all had to start school during the pandemic. New schools where they had to wear masks and social distance. And I prayed for my kids to find friends, friends in the neighborhood to have a, have a fresh start and be happy and not feel isolated. So for him to have a friend a block away is an answer to a prayer. Evelyn wanted to keep in touch with her, with her old friend. So that was her best friend from the old neighborhood over. Matt. When Matt and I met, we were both in our early 20s, big old messes, and we found each other. Um, but Matt, he's already shared this, so I'm not exposing anything, but, but Matt, had, Matt had run with a group that did a lot of drugs and had a lot of problems, and when he decided to quit all that, he also quit spending time with all those friends. And then a week before we got married, one of those friends committed suicide. So a prayer of mine has always been that Matt would have new friends, godly men. And my brother-in-law, Fidel, is amazing. Some of you guys know him, but he is, he is an awesome, awesome man who loves my sister, who protects and provides for my nieces, all the whole family. So it is, it's an answer to a prayer. So if I have a bad attitude last night, I'm saying to God, don't answer our prayers. I'd rather, I'd rather have my preferences. And it, and it was the same word, Ron, when you put out preferences. So that's one thing. You've got to surrender all your time. Another thing, I recognized that I was an emotional hoarder. Um, I've, I watched the show The Hoarders, where they have stacks of everything everywhere. And I was asking God why I was so angry all the time. And he showed me that I was angry because I was hoarding all of these hurts from my past because they were a comfort to me. I consoled myself when I was unhappy, and I could blame other people for what was wrong with my life. And there's no room for joy when you're full of all your, of all your past hurts. So Jesus reminded me that when he forgave me, he took every failure and nailed it to the cross and left it there. Forgiveness is forever. So I had to give that to other people. So I had to surrender all my pain. And then thirdly, I acknowledge that my being physically and emotionally available to other people now is by the grace of God and by faith. And that everything that I have access to, every one of you have access to. And you also taught about praise. So that's to attract. So if there's anything attractive about my life and both of my beautiful, amazing, healthy families, the praise all goes to God. So I encourage you to leave your comfort zone and change your worship. Absolutely incredible. Praise God. So I am Tina Seymour. 
I am the worship director here at Ambassadors Worship Center. So I've never really had a chance to do this, but thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve you all and alongside with you all. This is literally the best place that I have ever served at. I tell the worship team all the time, you guys are the best group of people that I have ever served alongside. So thank you. Thank you to our incredible pastors, because I know you're watching. If you're not, I know you're going to watch later. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, our apostles, Dr. Martin and Pastor Linnell, listen, you guys are the picture. If I don't know what to do, I go back and I look at the picture. Oh, that's how I'm supposed to do it, right? Pastor Josh is a disruptor. He is a challenger. He is a stretcher. He is a pusher. So thank you, Pastor Josh. Thank you so much, Ambassadors Worship Center, for such an incredible platform. Just thank you. My wonderful husband, my beautiful daughters, this is my first time doing this, so I have to get, you know, they've done this before. So thank you to my wonderful family, the Seymours. So really quick, my worship changed when I sacrificed my life. Listen to me. I have been in places in my life. I'm telling you, I have a really long story. If I do that, we will not leave till midnight. However, I'm going to share like the first page and like the sixth chapter of my life. And it is when I gave birth to Taylor. My worship changed really when I gave birth to her. I wrote a book called Taylor Made. And I'm going to tell you that I realized I was worshiping her, I was worshiping her sickness, I was worshiping circumstances, I was worshiping everything around me except God. And I learned during that time in my life when Taylor was in the hospital with pumps and machines hooked up to her, her liver was failing, kidney, heart, bleeding all over the place. I realized something, that worship has nothing to do with that. Worship has everything to do with God. Period. Worship is not situational. Worship is foundational. Right? Worship is like a vaporizer, right? And, and, and the fragrance that comes up, my life is the vaporizer, but the fragrance that comes up is worship. That should be the essence of everything that you do. God, that you will be glorified. When I serve my husband, as long as he sees you in this, you're being glorified. It's worship. When I serve my children, if they see you in it, as long as you're glorified, it's worship. When we stand up here on Sunday morning, God, let them see you, not us. Then it's worship. And so I learned very quickly. Uh, uh, we sat in the hospital room and the doctors came in. They said, oh, we found a liver after eight months of being in the hospital. Oh, thank you, Lord. They came in. We were excited. Family flew in. We were in Atlanta. They came in, took her to the operating room, and the liver was too big. Couldn't fit it. We waited all this time, three whole years. She was just failing. And I felt hopelessness fill the room. I literally felt the weight. And I heard the spirit of God say, Tina, what is your response? And I jumped up and I ran to the chapel. And I didn't know what to do. But I knew that when I could not trace his presence, I could go back to principle. So I said, God, I will bless you. I will bless you. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if she's going to live, but God, you're still worthy. God, you're still faithful. You're still God. You're still incredible. You're still a healer. And I blessed him with everything that was in me. Well, there was another mother in the room that was also on her face crying out to God. Later on, I found out that mother received the liver that Taylor could not receive. Her child received it. So we were both in the room worshiping for an exchange. Exchange. Had no idea. Seven days later, Taylor was transplanted. Glory to God. But I learned the most valuable lesson ever. Tina, worship has nothing to do with what you're going through. I don't worship God because he healed her. I don't worship God because he provides for me. I worship God because he's God. Period. Because he's God, period. So really quick, I have to move fast. Let me share. My scripture is Romans 12, 1. We all know it. Can we read it together? And so, come on, dear brothers and sisters, to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. What does it say? This is truly 
giving yourself to him completely. Because what do we always say, worship team? Worship is God's and they belong to him. We have one assignment and that is to worship God. All righty, so really quick, I just want to share these three points. So when we are worshiping God, when we are worshiping him, these are three things that I really believe will help us keep our focus on him and make sure that the worship is pure. Number one, the three things is principles and patterns. God is a God of principle. I love Dr. Miles Monroe because he talks about how when a principle is broken, then that thing is destroyed. If I put sugar in the gas tank, what's going to happen? Right? The principle of this thing is it has to have gasoline in order for it to function. God's original intent from the very beginning was to have relationship with you. He wanted to be in our presence, and he wanted us to be in his presence consistently, and it's possible. So we have to ask ourselves, am I following the pattern that he has given me? God's pattern will lead to his presence every time. Every time. Exodus 25 and 40, Moses went up to the mountain to meet with the Lord. And what did he say? If you are going to build a place for me to live, you have to follow this pattern that I gave you. All right. So the second one is direction. When I am thinking about am I worshiping from my life? I have to look at the direction that my life is facing. What am I offering out of my life? Who does my life point to? Who gets the glory out of what I am releasing from my life? A life pointed up will keep you consistently in God's presence. Colossians 1.16, I love this because it says that everything that was made for God, everything that was made by God was made for him. Your life was made for him. The third one is quality. I have to keep watch of the quality of worship because we're going to worship something, right? But when you're worshiping God, it has to be of high quality. The only quality that is approved is spirit and truth. That is the only quality that is accepted by God is spirit and truth. John 4, 23 and 24 says, for God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do I know that I'm worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Spirit produces fruit. What does, it, what does it produce? We all learned this in Sunday school, right? The fruits of the spirit. It produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You will always have an opportunity to present one of those things. Always. And then truth. Your life will present opportunities to truly be you. God will not receive worship from anything else, not an imitation of Tina. I have to worship him from truly who I am, truly who I am in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. So pure worship has nothing to gain in the realm of popularity, absolutely nothing. But real worship only hopes to touch the heart of the one it is worshiping. No, really, not a new light rig, not a new song, not something that gives me goosebumps and the hairs are standing up because I can listen to some things and give me goosebumps and it ain't God. Right? But no, truly, God, really, let this captivate your heart. What I'm offering, God, while I'm serving, while I'm, I'm speaking to my husband, while I'm dealing with the kids in summer camp, while I'm serving at the door, God, let it be worship. Let the fragrance that come from it be that of spirit and truth so that you will receive it as worship. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today to sacrifice your life in exchange of true worship. Thank you so much. Good morning, AWC. Good morning. I am Kylan Crawford. For those that don't know, uh, I am the uh, drummer of however many years this church has been here. It's the first instrument our, our pastor bought when I was about 13 years old. And uh, I, am the, uh, I have the pleasure of being the husband to Rebecca Crawford, the lady you saw up here transitioning. Yeah. <laughs> and to two rambunctious, loud, active boys, right? <laughs> but I want to share with you this morning is what I had to sacrifice for my worship to change. And I'm going to give you two words. My will. Give me a few minutes. You're going to get there with me in a moment. 
See, sacrificing your will creates the proper posture for your promotion, for your next level, for your next connection, for that deeper level of worship with God. It's a posture that we don't all really realize. And if you really just kind of think about what's been spoken this morning between the other four that are here up with my teammates, it's all winding down and coming down to this, these two words, my will. Ron mentioned something about surrender. I want to give you a little definition of what surrender really is. Surrender is to completely give up your will and thoughts, your ideas, your concepts, your understanding, your, 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 your willful accept, it's your willful acceptance of the one and true only God. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can only sacrifice your will when you're willing to surrender it all to him. Everything that was mentioned up here on the stage, you have to surrender it all to God. See, I, I, here's my problem, or here's, here was the problem. See, I was a man that was worshiping God with strings attached. There was, con there was contingencies, and there were, uh, uh, well, you know, I worship you if, God. I'll give you my all if, God. But there was not a full surrender to the one and true only God. And because of that, my worship suffered. My connection with God was just, it was weird. It was awkward sometimes. It was like I couldn't, I couldn't get into that space. And it seemed like I look across the room and my friend, I'm like, man, he's really enjoying God. But why can't I connect like that? Why can't I get God in my space like that? Why isn't my heart in this right place? But I realized it was my will. See, see, li listen, listen. I was too busy fighting my situation yeah. instead of focusing on God. Because I was in my flesh. I was in my own will. I was doing what Kylan wanted to do. Y'all not hearing me this morning. I'm trying to help you out. Um, see, I, was, I, was, I didn't realize that my struggle was the incubator for what was going to push me to my next level. See, you don't understand that the thing that you're going through is the very thing God wants to use to promote you. It's the very thing that God wants to use to lift you up. It's the very thing that God wants to use to bring you out of that dark place. It's your worship. See, see, sometimes we worship God and we're like, yeah, God, I'll worship you, but you can't have this over here. I need to be able to get to the club and do a little something. Right? God, I can worship you, but you can't have this over here. You know, I like to get twisted a little bit. I like to get my, I like to get my drink on. I like a little tango ray or something, right? You, don't play with me. God, I, I worship you, but, you know, sometimes I just want to hear a little something just to, just, to, just to take the edge off of what I'm dealing with. And it's only because you have not sacrificed your will to God. And because you haven't sacrificed your will, you can't worship him the way you need to. You can't get into that, 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 that place of intimacy that you need to be with God in order to understand that it's your connection with him that promotes you. It's your connection with him that gets you out of that dark place. It's that connection that drives the desire for sin out of your life. It's the connection. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out. So what I realized is this. Here's my solution. I realized that I was in my own way. I said, God, what is going on? What am I doing wrong? Why can't I connect with you? You ever, you ever try to have your iPhone? You try to plug your iPhone plug in the wall, and you can't really see behind the bed. You, you can't get the plug in right? That's what I felt like in my worship. So I'm like, God, what, what, what do I do? What, where, where am, what can I do? What do I need to do? Do I need to do cartwheels? Do I need to do jumping jacks? I need to give, sow a seed. What is he? He said, Kylan, it's your will. You're in the way of your situation. You're trying to speed through the process, not realizing it's what I'm using to bring something out of you. It's what I'm using to bring something in your life. It's what I'm using to glorify me, myself, through blessing you. But you can't get there unless you get into a, a personal place of worship, allowing me to connect with you in a real way. Say, get rid of my will. Say, not my will, but your will, God. So this is what I, let me, let's get to the scripture here. Y'all like, man, he did a lot of talking, he ain't talking about the scripture. Here's some scripture here. Psalms 37, 4 says, delight. Let me put that up there. Delight, let's look at it. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. But see, we all stop right there. 
We forget the other part. It says, commit your way to the Lord and trust him. And he shall bring it to pass. See, the problem with your will being in the way is you don't trust God in that situation. You don't trust God in that moment. So your will is keeping you from connecting with God because you're trying to make something happen. And what you really need to do is to fall on your knees and say, God, I need you. I need you. No matter what the circumstance, like Tina said, no matter if my baby is on the deathbed, no matter if I'm going to lose the house, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what's going on, I'm telling you right now, God, I'm going to worship you in that moment. I'm going to give you my all, God. I'm going to lay prostrate before you and let your light shine through me. That's what it means. So let me give you three, three, three points here. Three points and I'm going to get out you here. What I realize is this. Say P4. See, proper position prepares you for promotion. Your position has to be worship. See, we don't, see, <laughs> you think that it's a, a, a way to see the matrix? You think you're trying to figure out how I make this thing happen? It's a position of worship that you have to have in order for God to bring you out of that thing, in order for God to bring that, that thing that you want manifest in your life. It's a personal place of worship. So what happens is, is when you surrender your will, surrendering your will gives way to proper perspective of God. See, your will keeps you from seeing him correctly. You don't see him right. You see him in a different place because you're trying to make something happen. Your, I'm going to say it again. Your surrender will give way to your, to your proper perspective of God. See, let me tell you something. In Luke 22, 42, this is what happened. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he is with the disciples. And he says, hey, you guys come over here. You pray. Pray with me, right? And he goes over here and he begins to pray. And he says these words. He says, God, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. See, that's where some of you are right now. You're like, God, if it's your will, just take it away. I don't want to go through this anymore. This is too difficult. This is too hard. This is too challenging. God, what? what? No, not my will, <laughs> but your will be done. That's what Jesus says in that moment. He says, God, not my will, but your will be done. See, that is our challenge. That's our problem. We have to get our will out of the way so that can manifest. God can manifest the very things that we need in our lives. So when we do that, we see get proper perspective. We get proper perspective. So you can't see God clearly when you don't. The next thing is, is you, when you surrender, you will give way to your right position. Say position. See, perspective gets you ready for position. If you can't see it right, you can't be in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Hear what I'm saying? Perspective gives you position. When you see God right, now you know where you need to be. When you see what God is really doing in the situation that you hate being in, walking into that office you don't want to go to, you, you don't understand that God, that place, he's placed you there for, for a reason. And that is going to manifest something in you that's going to get you into the right place. Here's the last one. Surrendering your will will give way to your promotion in God. You're like, why are you talking about this about worship? I'm trying to help you understand the moment, the struggle that you are in is for a reason. And that reason is to get something out of you or to get something into you or to get you connected to someone. But you have to go through the process to make that happen. So when you surrender your will, what happens is you get promoted. Because what happened is, is you ended up being in the wrong place, but now you can see God clearly because you gave your will up, and now you see, I mean, I, I got the right perspective of God. I got right perspective. I can see God clearly now. That's what was happening to Jesus. When he told the, the disciples to say, hey, pr pray over here, when he's praying, he's trying to get right perspective. Because he didn't want to die, would you want to give your life for all these jokers in this room? I love y'all, but we be tripping sometimes. Jesus... He was man, but he was also God. So he's fighting with his own will in the moment where he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, trying to figure out what he needed to do. And he's like, God, just take this cup away from me if it's your will. But he said these things. He said this word. He says, if it's not my will, God, just let your will be done. You have to do that. So God went from being in a place where he couldn't see God clearly, so he needed to pray. He now sees God clearly. Now he's in the right position because he's aligned himself with the word of God. See, that's the problem, folks. We're not in a line with the word of God, so we can't even worship him correctly. We're, seeing, we're looking at God on the playing field like this, like he's equal to us. And the fact is he is above us. He is, all, he is almighty, all omnipresent. 
He's everything you need. And once God got into the right place, then he became promoted. You're like, how was he promoted? He got killed. Trust me. He was promoted. And when he promoted, guess what? He promoted you too. You got promoted in that moment as well. When God, listen, when Jesus died upon the cross, gave his life for the sins of man and restored the kingdom of God back to mankind, you got promoted. Because you couldn't get there without him. And for that very reason, you should be so willing to give up your own will to get into the place of God where you need to be so that God can have what he wants in your life. So some of you just need to stand up sometimes and say, you know what, God, not my, per imperfect, not my perfections, God, not my expectations, God, but your perfection, God. Not my, not my, my own desires, God, but I want, I want your desire, God. Not my own desire, God, but I want your plan, God. Not my plan, God, but I want your will. See, many plans are in a man's heart, but it's the will, it's the, it is the will of the Lord that will prevail every time. You have to. You have to. Trust me, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to help you this morning, and I'm trying to rush through it because I ain't got much time. Your will will keep you from getting to the next level every time. That's all they were saying, your will. I don't want all these people at my house. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> I don't either. Right? I, I want my baby to be healed. I don't know what's going on. I get it. I get it. God, I, I, wanna, I, I, I don't want to be sacrificed. I don't want to lay down my, my life prostrate. Yeah, I, I get it. Those are all things that connect to your will. Stand up on your feet. I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. No matter what I go through, your will be done. No matter what's said to me, your will be done. No matter what I may see, your will be done. No matter what str I'm struggling with, your will be done. No matter how I feel, your will be done. Do you receive that word this morning? Do you receive that word this morning? Just lift your hands in this room real quick. If you're like, I received that word, God, I want to give up my will so that your will can be done because your will is perfect, God. We're imperfected people, but made perfect through you. God, we give our lives, we give our hearts, we lift our hands in total surrender to you this morning, God, expecting that your perfect will be done in our life and everything that we do, whether we're at work, whether we're at a sporting event, whether we're having dinner with family, God, we just expect that your will to be done in our lives in spite of what we may feel, see, or think, God. Help us to see you clearly, Lord God. Get us in the right place position, Lord God. Help our perspective to change so that we can see you clearly, so that we can understand who you are in us, so we can be in the right place, doing the right thing at the right time, and therefore moving to the next level. God, we give ourselves to you, and we lay our lives down on your altar and say, God, have your way with me. God, have your way with me. God, have your way with me. Come on, get a moment there right, right now with God. Get a moment right there with God. God, have your way in my life that your will be done. In all that I do, let your will be done in all that I do. Sometimes you just got to say that over and over and over again to remind yourself, to let God know that I'm serious about this. I'm serious about what I'm going through. I I'm scared. I, 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 I don't know what to do. I, 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 it's, it just seems like I can't connect with you, God, but I'm going to lay my will down, God, to get in relationship, to get deeper connected to you, God. I just want to be connected. Is there anybody that just wants to be connected deeper to God? Maybe you need to kneel where you are right now. We're in this worship series. And just say, God, I just want to be connected to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, we honor you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name, Jesus. None like you in all the earth. You're King of kings and Lord of lords. If you receive that word, will you say amen? Amen, amen. Well, in a moment, our people in the back are going to get a QR code up there. And if you're visiting here for your first time or you're online and you're, you, you heard this message, your heart was pricked, you, you want to connect to AWC at a deeper level, at the next level, there will be some people in the back that are looking to meet with you on your way out the door. We would love to meet you. We would love to speak with you. We would love to help you make a connection in this organization because we believe that AWC is the best place on earth. 
And we know that if you connect with us and with what's going on here, God will change your life. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you and bless you. God, we thank you for your people. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We thank you, Lord God, that in all things, Lord God, that you will make a way out of no way, Lord God, that when it seems like things are going differently or the way we don't want, Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that our minds will stay focused on you, Lord. Like the old church mother would say, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that they are protected that they are blessed coming in, they are blessed going out, Lord God. And I pray right now, Lord God, that you will open an opportunity so that their worship will change, that their worship will go deeper, will go further, Lord God, and that they understand that through their worship, Lord God, that is how they, they get from one level, Lord God, to the next level, from glory to glory to glory. God, we thank you. May your face shine upon your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. We will see you next Sunday.